Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this journal entry, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what led me to study in Medina. I don't want to go into too much detail, but uh, I feel like it's important to help give a, uh, a perspective regarding why I came to Medina and what led me there. So my last year of college, I became Muslim. I basically embraced Islam because I read an English translation of the Quran online. I just searched on Google, uh, Quran, and then um, I read an English translation and uh, there was no doubt in my mind whatsoever that it was from Allah, that it was from the Creator, that it was the truth. Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me. And sometimes people ask me, you know, what, what was it about the Quran you know, that uh, made you feel so certain that it was from the Creator and that it was true. And SubhanAllah to me, it was just, it's, it's a strange question because it's sort of like asking somebody, you know, how do you know the sun is bright? Or how do you know fire is hot? It was just something that was just completely obvious to me. And it, it was so obvious to me that I really, I really thought at the time, if I just give like translations of the Quran to people, they'll read it and they'll see the same thing that I saw in it. Like it'll be as obvious to them that it's from Allah because it's, you know, that's just how obvious it was to me, alhamdulillah. And um, so once I read the Quran and I knew it was the truth, I just kept obviously wanting to learn more about it and learn more about Islam. I basically reached a point where I was like, I know that the Quran is from Allah. Therefore, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's a, a true prophet, he's the messenger of Allah. And Islam is the, the religion of Allah. So I have, to, I have to follow it. I have to become Muslim. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to deal with the consequences of that. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to hell for, the, for, for what? So, Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me and I needed to now learn about Islam so I can implement it and become become Muslim. And like I said, I embraced Islam on the internet, just reading it myself, studying it myself, so I didn't really know Muslims. I have no history that I know of of any Muslims in, uh, in my family or anything like that. So, you know, I, I sort of, I guess I was doing just a lot of research online. I was just reading articles, reading books, watching YouTube videos in particular. So, like when I learned how to pray, I learned that of course Muslims we have to pray five times a day. So, I learned how to pray by watching a YouTube video. Where they basically showed you the steps on how to pray, what do you say, what do you do. Um, you know, and that was sort of where I was at at the time. So, I reached a point, let's see, I was... I knew the Quran was from God, I was getting English translations of it, I was trying to talk to other people about it, give da'wah, even though I, I was a brand new Muslim, I didn't know very much, and I was, uh, eventually I was starting to pray. And subhanAllah, it's so important to, to have people teach you Islam properly, and just to give you an example, when I first started praying, you know, I knew we had to pray five times a day, and I knew that there were prayer charts that told you at what times you had to pray. So for example, you look up, uh, there are many different resources, but for your zip code, you can put it in the computer and they'll tell you, uh, Fajr, for example, let's say it's at 5, 12 a.m. So I used to think that you had to pray at 5, 12 exactly. You know, now, alhamdulillah, I know that when you pray, you, there's a, a time frame, you know. You might have like an hour or several hours to offer a certain prayer. But at the time, I just looked at the, the, different, the five different times they had for the five different prayers. So, for example, if Fajr was at 5.12, I would go, I'd make wudu at like, you know, 5.08 or something like that. And I would stand and I'd look at my watch until it, it was 5.12 and then I would start praying. You know? <laughs> so, obviously, you need, you need people who are knowledgeable who can teach you about the religion, who can teach you how to implement it properly. So, alhamdulillah, I was a Muslim and I believed in it and I wanted, you know, I really wanted to implement everything, but obviously I needed somebody to teach me. And since Islam, it deals with every aspect of your life, there's so much to learn. And it's so crucial that you, you get proper, authentic knowledge from, from the right people. 
So anyways, I ended up going to a, a masjid. I looked up what was like the nearest masjid and to my surprise there were several masajid in, in my area. I mean they were all about 15 minutes away, 20 minutes away, but there were still several, you know. So I went to the nearest one and I, I emailed them first so that I could meet with somebody there. So I went there and I saw, you know, Muslims praying for the first time, mashallah. I heard the Adhan for the first time and, you know, I stood with them and prayed and it was pretty, you know, I, I was very anxious at the time. I was very, you know, everything was new and I was, uh, I was never really that uh, much of an extrovert. You know, I was always sort of shy and introverted and stuff like that, but, you know, I just had to do what I had to do. So I went there. Um, I prayed for the first time in Jama'a um, and I met with... Uh, with the person who I had corresponded with via email, um, and you know, the, the the first thing that happened, the first thing you know, noteworthy was that when we prayed in Jama'ah, I noticed that people were praying differently than how I had learned how to pray, and this instantly confused me. You know, I didn't know anything about. Uh, the differences of opinion and the different madhabs and things like that. So, the person who I met with, he started telling me about the different madhabs, and I became pretty confused. You know, I actually, I don't know. It was it was a pretty big fitna for me when I first became Muslim because, you know, I, I completely believed in Islam. I believed the Quran was from Allah. The Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, was the messenger of Allah and all these things. But now, I was being introduced to would seem to me as different like denominations almost you know like some people will tell you you have to pick one of these four madhabs and you have to follow them in everything and um, I was like well you know why do I have to do that and which one which one am I supposed to pick and it was very confusing for me so basically I mean long story short I don't want to you know talk too much about this but that was, that was sort of a fitna for me. Eventually, I uh, was introduced to the Salafi da'wah. And this is one thing that I think happens to a lot of uh, converts or reverts, is they embrace Islam and the Salafi da'wah appeals to them because, I mean, theoretically, I don't see how anyone can disagree with it. I mean, you follow the, you know, whatever is authentic from, from the scholars of Islam. And... Um, so that, you know, that instantly appealed to me, but at the same time, since so many converts, I mean, we have, we have, we're starting from zero. We have pr practically no knowledge, so it's like, how do you really implement that? You know, so a lot of converts say they'll understand that theoretically the Salafi Dawah is correct, but then we won't have the, the knowledge of how to, to really practically implement it correctly. So you'll see brothers claiming the Salafi Dawah and making lots of dramatic mistakes. And um, unfortunately that then, you know, to, to an extent today, those sorts of mistakes have become associated with the Dawah itself, which is not really accurate. But anyways, to, the, the point is, is that I found myself needing to learn the religion. There was all the stuff I needed to learn. I was confused. I wanted to learn Arabic, of course. I wanted to learn what I was supposed to do from people who knew what they were talking about because I found myself being called to different groups. And alhamdulillah, none of them were like extreme groups or anything like that. Uh, you know, nothing in regards to violence or anything like that. But there were people who were, for example, they were just quoting completely fabricated a hadith, like constantly. So I found myself, before really understanding that authenticity is something to really focus on, that, you know, I was doing all these things that there was no basis for in the religion. I was saying things like, oh, you know, doing this means that, and that means this, whereas they were just completely fabricated things, but they were widespread, and brothers would say them to each other all the time, and things like that. So I just, I reached a point where I was like, I have to, I just wanted, I wanted to go to like a boot camp. I remember sending out emails, all kinds of desperate, just in desperation, like, is there anywhere I can just go and just study the religion? I just want to learn about Islam, learn Arabic, because there's so much to learn. There's just so much and it's confusing and, you know. So anyways, one brother, alhamdulillah, he ended up, uh, he was a brother who advised me about um, these different groups, basically, you know, because I had invited him out to a group that I was going out with, and 
and afterwards he sort of advised me like look these brothers are doing all types of things that they have no basis in the religion and I was like subhanAllah you know I never thought about that I never really realized what you're telling me and um, you know I wish I could go somewhere and study and he told me about the Islamic University of Medina you know he told me that you know brothers they, they've, they've gone there on full scholarships they've memorized the Quran and this and that and they learn Arabic and I was like man that sounds like exactly what I want to do man that's exactly what you know exactly what I'm looking for and shortly after I had that conversation with this brother another brother called me on the phone who was a friend of mine but both of these brothers young Muslim brothers my age and he told me he was going with his father to apply at the Islamic University of Medina and I was like subhanallah you know they're going to make Umrah of course as well they're going to visit Mecca but while they're in Mecca and uh, then going to Medina they would apply to the Jamia so I was like you know, Akhi, please, man, can I can I tag along with you? And he was like, okay, well, let me just ask my father. And Alhamdulillah, may Allah grant all these people genital for dose. I mean, they, you know, this brother, his father, they couldn't have been more helpful. You know, they let me tag along with them. They helped me. Uh, they, every, Alhamdulillah, Allah made it so easy for me. And my parents, they were also very supportive, you know. And Alhamdulillah, you know, I, you know, I can't thank all these people enough. And, um... So, long story short, I went to Medina, I made Umar with them, I applied, and alhamdulillah, about, about a year and a half, so about a year and a half uh, later, I was, um, you know, the list came out and my name was on the list, alhamdulillah. So, before I came to Medina, I'd only been, you know, I embraced Islam in 2008, um, I applied like very early 2009 and then alhamdulillah by like fall of 2010 I was a student in Medina so it all happened very quickly and Allah made it easy for me alhamdulillah so that was sort of my perspective um, coming to Medina um, I was a new Muslim I'd only been Muslim about two years um, a, a lot of it was just me on my own searching for the truth studying online and, and I wanted to go to Medina to really just learn the Arabic language and learn Islam properly from its authentic sources and from the scholars. And um, alhamdulillah, so now, you know, six years later after I came here, I graduated from the Arabic Institute. I was in that for three years and now, inshallah, I'm about halfway through my bachelor's in Kulita Da'wah wa Asul al-Din. And that's basically just a bit of my background, just um, to give you guys a little bit of a, um, an insight as to my history, my background, what led to me coming to Medina, and, um, and things of that nature. So, inshallah, future episodes will now, you know, you'll have more of a context to really understand where I'm coming from and understand sort of the big picture of my life experience. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.